A week or so later, Mark writes, if you ever find yourself in a situation like this, you might try going straight into it. It sounds counterintuitive, but I have tried with every step to move into the tragedy rather than away. I have asked a million questions. I have asked questions for which I did not want to hear the answer. I have found that the details help. Don't be afraid of the truth. It will come to you one way or another. So, eyes wide open, you will be able to find tiny footholds upon which to stand, when otherwise you will only fall. Months later at home during the painful period of rehabilitation, Mark writes, Felix was hungry and in pain. I came and sat with him and asked him to pray with me. We did, then we talked about what we could know at that moment. We talked about what we have rather than what we don't have. This is such a key piece of this puzzle for me. We can spend our lives bemoaning that which we do not have, or we can be grateful for what we do have. Both take time. We get to choose. So I said to Felix, who was sad about his inability to walk, sad about the pain, I said, sometimes you have to break down life into smaller and smaller chunks. Of course, it's <clears throat> too much today to think of the next month of using a walker, of the next six months of no bike riding, the next year with other challenges. It's too much to bear. And anyway, the future is not real. What about today, I asked, and even that was too much for him. So we brought it close to now. What about the breakfast I was cooking? I'm thirsty, Felix said. Now that's something we can do something about, I told him, and I got him some orange juice. A year has passed and Felix is doing very well now, doing all the regular 10-year-old things, riding his bike, going to school, swimming. He has a slight limp and his memory skills are weaker than most kids his age. Mark says that Felix handles small frustrations with little stress, adapts to change easily, and seems wise beyond his years. He knows what matters and what does not matter. At the one year anniversary of the accident, just a few weeks ago, on June the 2nd, Mark and Hannah and their family and friends went back to the park, back to the tree from which Felix had fallen. For Mark, a yoga teacher, the experience was wonderful to be there with the shared smiles and stories, but he also experienced grueling back pain. The next day he did yoga and every bit of self-chiropractic he knew and still the pain wouldn't lessen until all the parts of his being, he said, walked through that day at the park once more. Then the pain let up. He had to go through that experience once again. He wrote, We who endure trauma, and it's so many of us, we hold and suffer such a large part of the assault in our bodies. We may think we can move on with only our emotions, but I don't believe that is true. It's mind, body, and spirit, or it's nothing. That's my big lesson for today. I did not realize the depth of the pain dormant in me. I moved through some of it today, breathed through it, and still it hurts. I am humbled once again and grateful for the chance to slow down, appreciate the glories that we are offered in these lives we live. So, what is life all about? Is it all about happiness? I've often said, happiness is overrated. 
That is, happiness as we generally think of it. Instead, I like to use words like satisfaction, joy, peace, connection, a feeling of being in place. There is no way to avoid suffering and loss in this world. That is the lot of us human beings, I'm afraid. The only choice that we have is how we will respond. The good news is that what we really need beyond the basics of food and shelter and medical care, what we really need, money cannot buy. What we really need is accessible to all of us. We need to know that our life has integrity. That is, that we are being true to ourselves, to our gifts, to the times in which we live. We need to know that our life has meaning and that because we have lived, those who follow will have a better world. We need to be able to give and receive love in whatever forms we can both to stranger and to friend. That's about it. I have a quotation from the poet Rilke that I keep on my meditation table. I want these words to guide my living. It reads, God speaks to each of us as he makes us, then walks with us out of the night. These are the words we dimly hear. Go to the limits of your longing. When we are in that desperate, dark place, God speaks to each of us as he makes us, speaks to the very specific, unique creation that we are, speaks through friends, through poetry, through music, through a walk in the gorge, speaks to us out of the night, that is, speaks to us when we are empty, when we are needy enough to hear. And what is it that we hear? Go to the limits of your longing. Go to the limits of your longing, for you will find that the longing, the longing of your broken heart, is your truest prayer. Trust it, and it will lead you home. So be it. Amen.